I shan't talk on any of them. Well, there's our view. Okay, so what do you want to talk about the tools first? Let's talk about the tools first. Back in the early 90s, uh, there was no, no, there was no one way. There was uh, Dennis Stewart Slicer. And the Dennis Stewart Slicer is this beast right here. Nowadays, two other men, two other people make this. John Jordan and Johannes Mickelson. They make a version of this thing, um, but this is the original. Um, I'll pass this around if you're okay with that. Uh, the blade tapers from thin of about uh, three sixteenths to a three quarter inch diameter rod. So it's a pretty beefy tool. And as you go into the wood, you want to see it or no? As you go into the wood, you have to open up your current. And it's the same deal with any of the other straight parting tools. So here you have the full size McNaughton and you have the mini McNaughton. I've cored by hand with this. I have cored by hand with this. The problem is when you start taking a parting cut with this tip, you're only dealing with this width of steel. As you get back past that taper, it becomes very thick and you have to open up your curve even more to allow this to freely enter the wood. If you crank it over one way or the other in the curve, it's gonna bind and it's gonna make, give you a big surprise. So the little one is less aggressive, it's smaller. You can see that the section is consistent. You can take a pretty good small bowl core out of the middle of a, of a blank pretty easily with this. So back in the early 90s, I had the money for a Stuart Slicer tool, but I didn't have the money for a Stuart Slicer handle. So I have this harpoon, which is a Stuart Slicer with a teak handle. And this is what I keep next to the lathe and the tool rack standing by the lathe. When I want to take out a quick core, this is the one I grab. I don't set up the McNaughton. I don't take the small McNaughton out of the box and set up the, the system. I just use this to take the core. And we'll do that with this blank. Other tools that I use uh, for the rings and buttons are various parting tools. Uh, this is a 1 8 inch fluted parting tool. I think it's um, Nick Cook's design. This is a 1 8 inch straight sided parting tool, PNN tool, and a glazer handle. So it's kind of a hybrid. You want to see these? You want to pass them around? Yes or no? Yes. Angelo, were they made as uh, coring tools or were they made as parting tools? No, nope, they're made as parting tools. But for these little rings and buttons that I take out of the centers of lids, uh, it's easy to use a regular parting tool rather than uh, some kind of a coring tool. So what I'm going to do tonight. Oh, I need one of those. I use this. So I prepared this blank. To, uh, this is the backside. And you can see this line here. This is going to be, we're going to take a, a ring out of that for a picture frame right here. On this side, which would be the hollow of the bowl, I'm going to turn a tenon that I can reverse chuck this in the lathe. So this is, um, anybody know Jimmy Clues? Jimmy Clues makes this little collet chuck for your handles. It's uh, very easy to use. You can use all kinds of different size uh, tools in it with the adapters that he sells. Um, I just find it very convenient for the different tools that I use. Guess I should have asked somebody how to use this lathe, huh? How do you turn it on? Right, show on. Show on. Show on how to turn it on. I'll take the tool. Is it plugged in? Up and down. Switch it on. Well, first of all, they got to have it plugged in. Ah, that would help. You want your tools back? You might want to turn it off. I did. You okay. need these. 
Why don't you just flatten out the side and screw it up? I'm using this wing of the tool uh, to pick up the scraping part. This is the diameter of the tenon that I want to make. You see that in the there is the mark. It's a quarter inch parting tool. I'm just going to push it with a push cut straight in. Keep me moving the handle to dig one corner in more than the other. That's because the quarter inch part, according to a cut, here's a little cut on the blank. Somebody have that little red handled parting tool? When I turn the lathe on, I see it needs a little bit of screwing up. I'll do I'll true that up, but I'll mark the starting cut here so I don't lose it. Three eighths inch bowl gouge for trip this face. I'll come around and screw up the other face. So what I'm after with a, uh, for a picture frame is a rabbit on the side that's gonna take the easel. So I'm gonna take about an inch of material. Now as I, now as I push, use the push cut and pull, push the tool into the wood, the tool gets wider. So I have to take a very cut to allow that extra width to go in. Check the depth. I'm about halfway there.
Okay, this time I'll check. <laughs> so we'll get rid of those corners now. And I've got the tool over on its side using the cutting edge just for the right of the, of the point. You can come down the other way and just here in time. So when you're parting this way, you're parting into bowl grain. So every 180 degrees, you're cutting at the end grain. So there's the picture frame. That'll go into another chuck and turn the recess for the easel back. Then turn it around and turn the beauty face. So this being the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to take a small core out of this with the, the slicing. What'd you just do there? You just took a ring off the bottom of the bowl, which most of us would have just turned into chips. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Now this is a small bowl, kind of ruined the bowl blank for a bowl, but it I win a picture frame. So I make a different shade bowl because I want a picture frame. But if you have a really precious piece of wood, you can parse this out as much as you care. You can, instead of taking a three quarter inch piece off the back, take a half inch piece and do it twice, depending on the shape you want to end up with, with your bowl.
And the pinky is up, not because I'm polite, but because I'm hiding from it behind it in the chip. If anybody looked at this tool closely, you'll see that the tip is concave so that you have two spurs on either side of the cutting edge. Is that a carbide insert? It's, um, I, I've been calling it carboloid. It's not carbide and it's not high speed steel. It's something in between. Just raised on? Just raised on, yeah. Chips that are coming out are hot. Has anybody been following Richard Raffin's videos on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. So you'll, if you've been watching, he's demonstrated this tool with the, the real handle. What's this, this speed you turning at? Somebody asked. 720, this is. A little half circle diamond hone. We'll get into that little flute. I'm going to slow it down because I'm getting pretty far off the tool rest. You're down to what, maybe 500? Uh, no. Well, there's 550 or so. Now, ideally, it's is to have a light that you can shine in that curve, so you can see what's going on. So I'm wiggling the tool back and forth to clean out the kerf at the bottom because there's two kerfs side by side. And if you saw there were there was a the web had come out that was between them. So let's we'll see what we got here.
So that's about where I am. I'm going to try to make this a little bit more shallow so I don't go through make a funnel. underneath so I definitely want to get all that clean this literally looks like an entirely new pair of crocs like this doesn't even look like mine anymore definitely don't want to be losing those i guys a video showing you guys how i clean my crocs more specifically my white fluffy ones because as you see there's a lot of pins on here and they're fluffy so you know it's kind of hard to clean inside as you guys see the front is a little bit dirty i try to keep them pretty clean like i don't wear these unless i know i'm going somewhere that's gonna So it looks to me like I'm down to about one inch in diameter. I don't know, can you tell from out there? <clears throat> yes, no. Angelo. Yeah, I got a little bit more. That's what I was working for. So there's the rest of the bowl blank. What are you going to do with that little four? We're going to turn it. Okay. If I were at home, I would probably would have turned this a little bit smaller in diameter. So I'd have a better foot, but I have a chuck that'll take a one inch diameter spigot. Um, and we can put this on the chuck and do that. I haven't moved the tool rest of the blade water. So you all don't need to see me make a bowl, do you all?
just clean up the bowl here on your time so I don't have to do it at home on my time. So because we still have the, the spigot there, we can retuck this. And we can turn the foot. That's 900. Okay, so here we have the little tiny bowl blank. If anybody's interested to see me turn little tiny bowls, I'll be demonstrating at the Pennsylvania Guild of Craftsmen this coming Friday between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. So come on by. You might... Pardon? Specifically little tiny bowls? Specifically uh, off-cut bowls, bowls from other bowls, some uh, band sawed blanks, but basically small. So that's it for me. Anybody got any questions? I guess that gives you an opportunity. You can use that smaller piece and then add it to another piece of wood to make a lid. That way you're incorporating you can, the same wood in the lid as the bowl. You can do almost anything with it. I'm almost certain I have a piece of Wengi um, in segmented form that I could use for an edge on this bowl and take a put it finish this up uh, with a dark a dark edge on top and a dark edge on the foot and then this is his ribbon ebony it was marked ribbon ebony uh, uh, ribbon mahogany i don't really know what it is but it's pretty dusty stuff um, but that's what i got good question Doug. Thank you. yes sir uh, sketch out the steps in advance, or is it just uh, you've learned from mistakes on like cutting the recess, cutting the tenon? Uh, and at first, I'm wondering why you were cutting the recess, not knowing what the next step was going to be. So, yes, I, I planned this all out. <laughs> yeah, there's schematic for this already planned. <laughs> but if you if you've been watching Richard Raffin and you see and you watch his um I'm gonna turn my flashlight off. Oh, yeah. you, I bet you were. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the battery runs out. <laughs> if you've been watching Raffin's videos on his uh, his bowl turning and his box turning. He goes through the same sequence of steps that I've just gone through every time. And for Raffin, it's not a question of so much, how am I going to make such a beautiful piece? It's do it and done. Where he sands to 200, 220, 320 max paste wax and um, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil. That's it. To me, that's not a real fine finish. But if you want to sell them, if you want to sell them, you need the lowest possible price. And he's got he's got the technique and he's got the finish. So it's knocking him out and getting him on the show for sale. That's it. Any questions from the Zoom? Okay, <laughs> did you say you'd be at Crafty This Friday. Oh, first Friday. First Friday, yep. That's on North Queen, right? That's on Queen Street, across the street from uh, the bicycle shop. Yeah. Well, thank you, Angela, for the demo. And thank you, everyone, tonight for attending. Uh, don't forget, uh, the turn for the troops is uh, 
this Saturday and Sunday at the Harrisburg Woodcraft. And our next open shop time will be at the uh, 12th, Saturday the 12th, uh, from 9 to 1. Uh, next month's challenge is uh, picture this, turning a picture frame or other wall hanging. And uh, tonight's demo is very timely for that. So hope to see what. That ring? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Can't wait to see what you turn next month. I also have an announcement, if oh. I can. Uh, uh, quick announcement. Quick announcement. Uh, Mark Sphery will be doing a slideshow on Coffee Hour on the 10th. Oh, I love Mark. That's a week from this Thursday. That'll be our November guest star. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you in December. Okay.